Well, Hurricane Ian's impact in Florida is being felt far from the coast as northern and central parts of the state saw historic flooding. Some counties were measuring rainfall in feet, not inches. Let's bring in Florida Republican Congresswoman Kat Kamek right now. Her district includes large areas of central Florida. And Congresswoman, thank you for joining us. I want to start with this, uh, the prediction of rising water. It, it is very dangerous and can be life-threatening. How are emergency management teams preparing for that? Well, thanks for having me. And yes, you know, the danger of these storms is not just during the actual event itself, but in the five, six, seven, sometimes even 10 days after the fact. See, some of the areas around Florida, we have the intercoastal waterway where that is one of the St. John's, which is one of two rivers in the world that actually flows north. That, stir, that surge continues to rise. And with us having about 50 inches of rain already this year, every retention pond and drainage ditch is already completely filled. There's nowhere for this water to go. So it's important that we have these high water rescue vehicles that continue to evacuate people. Portions of my district are underwater. About 200 homes have been flooded in just one little town. So it's so important to continue to have access to this type of equipment as we're spread thin across the state now with emergency uh, management all over the place. We have to have people abiding by local officials and their guidance. It's too soon to say that we are out of, out of the woods on this. So it's important that people continue to heed local officials' advice and that we keep those rescue efforts going. Very, very important. Now, this next part here sh shouldn't be an issue, but unfortunately, that's where we live in U.S. politics. So I will ask you if you could tell us more about how the two political rival rivals we're talking about, President Biden and Governor DeSantis, have come together to help the people in Florida. You know, with, with President Biden making the trip to Florida this week, this is his opportunity to really show that he's putting people above politics. You know, Governor DeSantis, he has been about the people before, during, and after the storm. My hope is that President Biden comes down and does just that. You know, if he comes down here and starts talking about climate change and COVID vaccines, as he did as we were preparing for this storm, that's going to rub a lot of people raw, especially since we are currently engaging in active rescue efforts. So many people have lost everything that they know. Yeah. We're trying to get power restored and fuel to folks for generators. We need to put people first and be Americans first, not Republicans or Democrats. Well, that's the way it should always be, if you ask me, all the time. Stop. Absolutely. You know, full stop. But listen, you know, you mentioned you feel like President Biden should behave in a certain way. He's the president. I'd imagine he will. And he said he, of course, is very much willing to meet with Governor DeSantis uh, when he yeah. arrives there on Wednesday. Now, you know, that works both ways. The Governor DeSantis, he's not an angel either in this, this scenario. You know, he's had some really, uh, you know, harsh things to say about the president, his leadership. And you know how it goes. It's politics. But Will they yeah. both uh, will they both uh, extend hands and shake hands and and come together for the sake of the people there in Florida? As you laid out, they need so much help there. Absolutely. You know, and what I've seen thus far has been really uh, quite an amazing orchestra of federal, state, and local officials working in concert together. And that's the way it should be. Um, you know, we're focused now, like I said, on the evacuation of people who got left behind, who didn't want to evacuate. There's active search and rescue operations going on. And listen, there, there is absolutely an element uh, of criticism that goes both ways. But I believe, because I, I know him, Governor DeSantis, he is putting our Floridians first. He's doing what he needs to do to make sure that they are taken care of. And yeah. it, it shouldn't be about politics in this situation. It should be, like I said, about the people. And I do think that they will be able to come together and be consummate professionals in this and yeah. really focus on what needs to get done. I, I agree. <clears throat> Pardon me. As Governor, uh, Governor DeSantis has shown great leadership there, and as the president, yes. President Biden, has shown great leadership. And so we're all good with that. Let's talk more about what the folks in Florida need. Is that help on the way, and will the aid continue to flow? You know, I can't tell you how heartwarming it has been uh, down the highway, down I-75, just truck after truck after truck with uh, cranes, generators, I, I mean, the, the linemen. I mean, it's such a sense of pride as an American to see the cavalry come in from all over the United States. I'm seeing license plates from as far as Colorado and Montana. People are really going all out to help uh, our state, which is in dire need. 
But, you know, while we are trying to figure out just how to get folks out, the next big mission set, I think, for FEMA, in addition to getting power restored and water uh, restored, it's going to be the housing mission. Mm -hmm. People lost everything in this storm, and yeah. they have nowhere to go. So the housing mission is something that we are actively trying to figure out. My colleagues, Byron Donalds, Greg Stubbe, Vern Buchanan, and others, they are boots on the ground in their districts working to try to establish a priority of needs, and they've done yeah. a fantastic job. I think that the housing yeah. mission is going to be a big hurdle because there's yeah. so much devastation and so much flooding. That's going to be yeah. the next big challenge. And, and, and a couple quick things before I have to let you go, because I know you're really busy, but uh, as far as housing, do you think there's a possibility that your, your local, state, and federal leaders can come together and maybe talk to some of the hotels there to be, maybe temporarily house some of the people who are just left with no place to go? Because those FEMA trailers, they're not so good. Right. You know, we've seen we've seen the, the, that disaster in the past. Listen, across the board, all of my colleagues here in Florida, Republican and Democrat, it has been one team, one mission. And so I have no doubt that everyone from the private sector to the public sector are going to come together to make something work. So I have well, great faith. We've got a long road ahead, but I'm very encouraged. One quick final question for you. What are your thoughts on suggestions that these areas that were destroyed by Hurricane Ian should not be rebuilt? You know, I think it's just too early. When when we have people that are out doing search and rescue missions, we've got the Coast Guard pulling people off of areas like Pine Island and Sanibel Island. I think those conversations are just way too early to be having. We need to be focused on the rescue mission today. Well, Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek, thank you so much. Uh, Redcross.org uh, forward slash uh, Fox Forward is where you can go to help the great people there of Florida. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. Thank you. Thank Take you so much. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.